Kelsey and I am the project coordinator for the Saving Turtles at Risk Today project. And I'm Dave Seaburn, the freshwater turtle specialist with the Canadian Wildlife Federation. Today we're at Muskoka at the Cranberry Marsh hunting for turtles. Mm -hmm. And we actually have some turtles with us that we're going to talk to you guys about. So our first turtle is actually a pretty neat looking turtle. This is called a northern map turtle. You can tell she's not terribly used to flying right now. But our northern map turtle has these nice big paddle-like feet and that makes her an excellent swimmer. And she actually prefers living in really deep, fairly cool bodies of water like Lake Muskoka or Lake Rosso. So that's mostly where you can find this kind of turtle. Now you may be thinking this looks a little bit like some of the turtles that you might be finding. Now we can tell that this is a map turtle because she's got all these yellow sort of squiggly lines all over her head and her legs and it kind of looks like a topographical map. And that's actually where she got her name. Now sometimes, however, she can be confused for another kind of turtle and that's this one here. And this is the painted turtle. Probably the most commonly seen turtle in most of Canada. It's found in eastern Canada, parts of the prairies, and it's called a painted turtle because it has bright colors on the side of the shell and on the arms and legs. Painted turtles are found in a wide variety of habitats, marshes, lakes, rivers, often even right in cities. So if you live in eastern Canada, you've probably seen a painted turtle in a local wetland. Now, to go to a completely different turtle than the painted turtle, this is actually one of my favorites. This is called a stink pot or an eastern musk turtle. And you can tell that they have some similarities to the painted, right? They've got that shell. But other than that, they don't look very similar. So. Our musk turtle actually gets their name because for their size, they are very, very smelly, especially when they're afraid. They do something called a musk. It's very similar to kind of like a skunk, where when they're scared, they release this really bad smelling odor, and then the predator thinks, oh, I don't, I'm not picking that up. So it's a fantastic deterrent for predators. But you'll notice that our musk turtle looks like another kind of turtle that more people are familiar with, and that's the snapping turtle. And that's because he does have a fairly large head and he's got little limbs and it, even if we look onto his belly, the musk turtle has a really, really small belly shell or as we call in the scientific community, plastron. So a lot of people will see a musk turtle and they actually think that it's a baby snapping turtle. But if you notice our musk turtle's teeny tiny little tail. Hi, we're back. We've had technical difficulties here in the field, but the turtles are still here. So the last species we looked at was the stink pot or the musk turtle, and now we're going to look at something a little bit bigger. This is a snapping turtle, and it's one of the more common species in eastern Canada, and it looks much bigger than a stink pot. It does have some similarities with the big head and things like that. There's a few key differences between a stink pot and a snapping turtle. One of them is the tail. If you look very carefully at the tail of the snapping turtle, you can see... You see a turtle that looks like a dinosaur tail. It's got to be a snapping turtle in Canada. In addition, the back of the shell kind of has some serrations. It's not a very smooth shell, it's got little points. And there are ridges that run down the top shell of the turtle. So snapping turtles have a reputation as being maybe aggressive or things like that, but really snapping turtles aren't aggressive so much as defensive. The snapping turtle is on land, say it's going out to lay its eggs, and you go towards it, it's scared. It thinks you might hurt it, and that's why it might snap at you or hiss at you. It's feeling scared. Now this may look like a big turtle, but snapping turtles can get a lot bigger than this. And we actually have an example of one of those big turtles. This is more of the size that a lot of people come in contact with. 
Now you'll notice our snapping turtles right now, they're not actually snapping. And that's because these turtles are pretty used to humans. They have been captively raised. But there are some actually really easy ways to be moving snapping turtles. For example, if you find them on a road, you'll notice what Dave was talking about with that nice sort of bony ridge at the very back. We can actually use that as a handle. So if we grab one side and the other side, making sure to keep our hands kind of close to the hind legs. And instead of holding him this way, because he's a little bit uncomfortable, we're actually going to tip him upside down and we're going to wheelbarrow him across the road. So that's probably one of the best ways to move them. Now if you're not too sure about picking the snapping turtle up, because they do have these nice long claws, or a um, winter snow brush, the, all of those things can be the road. Okay, we've got two more species of turtles we want to talk about today. And the next one is one of my favorite species of turtle. As you can see, it's got bright spots on its shell. And you would be correct if you guessed that this was a spotted turtle. These are one of our smallest species of turtles in Canada. It's also one of our rarest. Spotted turtle is an endangered species. It's currently only found in the province of Ontario. It's also found in the United States, but in terms of Canada, it's got a very distinctive it's got black patterning with light colored, but that can vary from turtle to turtle. And you can see they both have the black and the light colored, but the pattern is very, very different. And in fact, there's something else different about these two individuals. If you look at their heads, you can see that one has a fairly dark head and one is a bit lighter. So the one with the dark head and the dark eyes is a male and the one with the lighter color is a female. It's kind of like the ladies wear makeup. If people are lucky enough to come across a spotted turtle, they're not actually sure that it's a spotted turtle. I mean, it has the yellow polka dots and everything, but there is another kind of turtle that we have in Ontario, especially when young. It does look like it has similar yellow dots or flecking on its shell. And that turtle is the Blandings turtle. So this one here especially, you'll notice, has all of those nice sort of yellow flecking marks. And as they do age, sometimes the shells get a little bit darker and more solid. But you can see, even as young adults, or even as young individuals, the Blanding's turtles can be pretty tricky when trying to determine between the two. Stay pretty small, only about the size of the palm of your hand. The turtle gets to be significantly bigger than that. That and she also has a really nice high dome shell, kind of like an old army helmet. And that's a great way to determine that this is a Blanding's turtle. Look at their yellow chin and throat. It kind of looks like they dip themselves in mustard. It's a fantastic way to determine that you're looking at a Blanding's turtle. And our Blanding's turtles are usually smiling. They've got these little upturned bits on their mouth. And so they're pretty happy turtles as well. Now one on their plaster on they have a hinge kind of like a trap door so if anyone's familiar with something like a box turtle it's kind of similar where when the turtle is really scared he's gonna pull all his legs and his head into his shell and our captive turtles don't get too scared very often but if this were to happen to a wild wild turtle you could actually he would pull his legs and his head all the way in and you can notice that this bit of the shell actually moves and it would close up over his head and his legs and that's to protect himself now one of the major reasons that they're actually able to do this is because Blanding's turtles are a little bit more terrestrial or they walk around on land a little bit more than some of our other turtles in Ontario. And it's not necessarily the boy Blanding's turtles that do this, but more so the girls. And that's because they need to lay their eggs on land. And all the turtles that we've talked about today need to lay their eggs on land. And this can actually be a problem for a lot of our turtles, especially because when they're walking around on land, usually they need to be crossing roads. And road mortality is one of the major problems that turtles in not only Ontario, but across Canada have to deal with, is road mortality. We do have one more special guest for you guys, and that is a little tiny turtle. So this is a 
Blanding's, whoops, Blanding's turtle hatchling. So she's actually about a year old, but you can notice she's even still got this kind of high dome shell. And if she sticks her head out just a little bit, you can kind of see that yellow chin and throat. So she's just a little guy. And it's reasons like this turtle that we want to actually be working with turtles. We want to make sure there are lots more of these little hatchling turtles, especially Blanding's turtles in the province of Ontario and across Canada as well. We want to make sure that we're protecting our little Blanding's turtles and all the other turtles too. Indeed. So thank you for joining us. Hopefully we've been able to answer some of your turtle questions and we'll see you later.